This video is brought to you by the European Reference Network, ARN Cranio. We will be discussing drug-induced sleep endoscopy in children with obstructive sleep apnea. Patients with craniofacial anomalies are at increased risk for obstructive sleep apnea. This condition is characterized by intermittent obstruction of the upper airway during sleep. Drug-induced sleep endoscopy, or DICE for short, is currently the most commonly employed tool for dynamic evaluation of the upper airway in patients with obstructive sleep apnea. Identification of the sites of upper airway obstruction during sleep may guide decision-making by clinicians and patients or caregivers regarding the different treatment modalities for obstructive sleep apnea. How is DICE performed? The DICE examination is typically performed by an ENT surgeon in the operating theatre in the presence of a paediatric anesthesiologist. The anesthesiologist will administer drugs allowing the patient to fall asleep while maintaining spontaneous breathing. Once the patient is sleeping, the ENT surgeon introduces a slim, flexible endoscope through the nose into the upper airway. Which sites of the upper airway are examined during DICE? First, the flexible endoscope will be passed in both the right and the left nostril to evaluate the nasal passages. The ENT surgeon will look for congestion of the inferior turbinate or a deviation of the nasal septum. At the level of the nasopharynx, the ENT surgeon looks for the presence of adenoids and in how they affect the passage of airflow at the nasopharynx. At the level of the soft palate, the ENT surgeon looks for flutter of the soft palate or collapse. At the level of the oropharynx, the ENT surgeon looks for the presence of tonsils and to what extent they are enlarged and obstruct airway. The tongue may fall backwards and obstruct the airway. The presence of lymphoid tissue on the back of the tongue, referred to as the lingual tonsils, can also contribute to airway obstruction at this level. The epiglottis may be a site of upper airway obstruction when it collapses against the posterior pharyngeal wall or when it curls upon itself, thus impairing passage of air. At the level of the larynx, the ENT surgeon looks at the mobility of the vocal folds and the presence of supraglottic collapse. The ENT surgeon will record the entire procedure and make a standardized note of the findings during the procedure. This data will be then available for review later, discussion with the patient and caregivers and with other colleagues of the team.